This is Walking Through Mark, episode 27. The location for the reading will be Mark chapter 13, Mark chapter 13, verse um, 32, I believe. Yes, verse 32. Originally, and this is a long time ago, originally this was, um, this Walking Through Mark series was to be a an in the pulpit exercise. Um, I was going to basically do what you are witnessing here at my desk I was to do um, before the congregation. I, in fact, I had started to do that. A couple, I think, maybe three, two or three uh, episodes had been done before the coronavirus uh, thing kicked up and uh, prevented meetings. And uh, that's when I immediately, uh, well, I say immediately, very quickly, I decided, hmm, I'm going to just keep do going with them, but do it at my desk. Well, it went on for so long, so many weeks that we missed meeting. We uh, just resumed uh, today. This is Sunday the 17th of May. We just um, uh, resumed our, our meeting this morning. And uh, I decided yesterday, as I was making arrangements for today, for Sunday, uh, hmm, I don't think I'll go back. We're near the end. I know there's still a few episodes left of Walking Through Mark before we finish chapter 16, but we're close enough to the end. I don't think I'll, just because we're meeting again, go back to the pulpit for the last few uh, installments. And so just thought I'd let you know that. Uh, I'll, I'll continue them here at my desk until, um, until, we're, until we're through. And the schedule will be the same. I'll try to do Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday each week, an episode. Okay, chapter 13. The first verse that you will hear uh, me read, I read at the very tail end last uh, of uh, uh, episode 26. So uh, if, if you've heard that, you'll hear it again. But I, I just want to go back and get it again and go on from there. This is chapter 13, verse number 32. But of that day and hour, and I'll explain that about something about that more in just a minute. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. It's like a man going to a far country who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to each his work and commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Watch, therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming, in the evening, at midnight midnight, at the crowing of the rooster, or in the morning. Lest coming suddenly, he finds you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. A couple things here. Uh, one, uh, le well, yes, let me first of all just say what ties in with the previous um, Walking Through Mark number 26 episode. Uh, he starts off by saying, but of the day and the hour, no one knows. What 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 day are we talking about? Okay, I'm not going to go over it all again. In fact, I'll just reference it and let you do that on your own if you wish. Go back and watch uh, the previous uh, episode and you'll see Jesus has been talking about the imminent, uh, I say imminent, I mean it's in the generation to whom he's speaking. That's how soon it will be. It's not going to be hundreds and thousands of years into the future. But it's going to be while some of those folks, uh, the generation there uh, present at that time when he's speaking, uh, we'd say around 30, 33 AD, somewhere in there, however you uh, reckon calendars. Uh, and, uh, and it was uh, going to be a destruction of the temple, a destruction of Jerusalem, a destruction of Israel. Uh, and all of that was going to be uh, happening, um, uh, well, we know from history when it was, uh, 70 AD. So it would have been about 40 years later. Okay, enough, on, enough of uh, background. So then he starts here, and, we, and, I, and I, I stated or, or referenced this first, read it actually, uh, as we finished last time. He says, though, I can't get any more precise than I have, got, I have gotten or given you signs to point you to the nearness of certain things happening. But if you want the exact date, you know, uh, I'll pick, a, like, for example, September the 23rd, you know, or whatever, uh, and it'll be in the year 70. Uh, I'm sure he didn't regard time calendars exactly the way we do, but I'm just giving you an example. I can't get precise to the time in that sense. I can't give you the exact day and hour this is going to happen. On the other hand, I have given you a whole lot of clues and they haven't been difficult like riddles to figure out. They're just signs that are as easy as able. you're able to look at trees and leafing and, and tell certain things about, you know, the weather or planting or agriculture or whatever. You can do that. 
We have that capability, or they had that capability. One more thing, too, I'll mention about that, and that is this, that it's interesting to note that he doesn't know that. This is not to mean by any means that Jesus was somehow not God or half God or a created God or something like that. Oh, no, no, no. He, he basically was put to death, not only, but to a great extent, because he was making himself equal to God. And if you, we'll get into some of that basic, or, or more so coming up. Uh, I don't know if it'll be, I don't think it'll be today, but it, uh, it's coming up before long. Um, and so, no, 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 we're not saying that. But some of his prerogatives that he had, some of the um, uh, uh, heavenly privileges that were his in heaven prior to coming in the womb of, of Mary and born and raised to Joseph and Mary and eventually, of course, uh, uh, going out on his own as a, as a great uh, teacher and prophet and so forth, uh, he, he left behind. Uh, that was not him. And here, here's an example of one of, one of those things. Uh, the Father in heaven, he knows, but me on earth, I don't know. And it's not been God's will in heaven to let people on earth through me know any pr more closely, precisely, specifically, when the destruction of the temple will come than, than what I've given you. And then he ends, and in fact, he says it more than just at the very end, but near as the chapter is wrapping up there, watch, watch, watch. That's putting it my own way. Uh, you've go you're going to have to keep your heads up. You're going to have to keep your eyes and ears open. You know, we have different figures of speech. And, 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 and they, could, they must be careful. Over 40 years, and he doesn't use that number. I'm using 40 because I know how long it was until the actual destruction came because history re records that later. But uh, it's, it's going to be easy to get slack, lax, sleepy, um, take your eye off the, off the, off the, in this case, not a prize, but uh, the, the coming disaster that you've been forewarned about. And so you're going to have to always be alert, watchful for, for, for what I've told you to look, look out for. And when you see it, I mean, that drop everything. And that's not a figure of speech. That's a literal drop everything and go. Uh, you, they literally might only have moments or hours to depart. You do, you're not going to have days and weeks to pack and, and, and get everything arranged in order for leaving. You're, you're basically, when you see certain things, I told you ahead of time to be watchful for that. And when that happens, I don't mean, I mean, if you're, you remember what we said last time, if you're out in the field, you don't even go back in. Uh, you just stay out there and keep going. <laughs> and if you're on the roof or somewhere inside, get out and get out of town in a hurry. So uh, anyway, you're always going to have to be watchful. All right, chapter 14. After two days it was Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they may take him by trickery and put him to death. But they said, not during the feast lest there be an uproar of the people. That's a short reading, but uh, 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 thought changes somewhat in the next verse, so I'll pause too. This is repeating myself, but Mark is repeating himself too, and uh, so I'm repeating because Mark is repeating how that the, 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 uh, many of the Jewish leaders, religious leaders, are, are out to destroy him, to ruin him. They're not simply wanting to discredit him and to make him look bad. Uh, they want him gone and literally gone. And uh, they don't want to just run him out of town and say, go back up to Galilee where your, where your roots are and stay up there. I mean, they want him dead. It's amazing. And they'll resort to any underhandedness. He call, uh, Mark calls it in uh, this translation, take him by trickery. Oh, my. They are scheming to get this done. It doesn't matter, basically, what they have to say and do. They are not at all genuinely trying to deal with what's uh, what's underway. And this is, and, and, and remember, it started by saying two days to pass over and so forth. Uh, I've been indicating we're in the last few days of the life of Jesus before the cross, and uh, here we can see it either again or for the first time spelt out in numbers. Two days. I mean, it, it, we're getting right up to, to the time. Okay, uh, verse number three. And being in Bethany, that's that village just outside Jerusalem, and being in Bethany, he'd go out there at night, remember? Uh, uh, we said something about that previous. Being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, 
a woman came having an alabaster flask of very costly oil and spikenard. Then she broke the flask and poured it on his head. But there were some who were indignant among themselves and said, Why was this fragrant oil wasted? For it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they criticized her sharply. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She's done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always. Whenever you wish, you may do them good. But me, you do not have always. She's done what she could. She has come before him to anoint my body for burial. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. And I just did it again. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm being a little humorous about it, but seriously, John, in his epistle, and I know we're reading Mark, but John, in his gospel account, I mean, uh, he indicates at the end of his book, many, 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 many things Jesus did are not recorded. Uh, it's not like, uh, in, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and add Matthew, Mark, and Luke to it as well. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John just write a smidgen, just a small percentage of what could have been written about everyday things. We have just a few hours, and okay, fine, stretch it a little bit, a few days if you add it all up, recorded uh, information about things he said and did during those few days and so forth. Whoa, he was going about doing good for years. <laughs> Whoa, where's all the where's all the transcripts of all the events that happened? We don't we don't have them. And John exaggerates, I think, a little bit, or uses what's called hyperbole. He 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 stretches it for uh, emphasis sake. He said the world couldn't contain the whole. Some might argue it's a literal statement. The world couldn't contain the whole if I were to write down everything he did. <laughs> you know. And uh, so anyway. <clears throat> I may have lost you already, so let me try to bring it back to where we started. Jesus knew, knows, when he says, wherever the gospel is preached, this event that this woman has, this thing, that this woman, this event that we just read about, this, uh, uh, this uh, good deed that this woman took some uh, very precious uh, perfume, it's called costly oil of spikenard, and, and pours it on his head. Wherever the gospel is preached in the world, this will be talked about. And that's why I sort of jokingly said, and I just did it again. <laughs> over and over and over and over. Do you get my point? I, th I think he knew that it would be recorded. And you might say, well, of course. No, no, not of course that it'll be recorded. Because 99% of what he does is not recorded. 99% of what he says is not recorded. So how does he know this 1% will be? Well, <laughs> he is God with us. Remember that. And though in the previous point I said that he didn't have the exact privileges of God in heaven while on earth in every respect, that doesn't mean he doesn't know anything like God in heaven knows. It's just a matter of there's some self-imposed limitations. He said the Father knows the exact time I only have all these signs leading up to it. And uh, we can. I'm not going to try to debate as to why that is, but that's just the way it is. That doesn't mean, though, he doesn't have any advanced knowledge of anything. Well, that's obviously not true. And, and let me break down the story here before we close for today. <laughs> this is a wonderful story from a couple, three different standpoints, and I'm sure I'll miss one or two that you may have in mind, but let me bring out a couple that I have. One, one thing here is that, that uh, this uh, woman, I doubt... <laughs> Once again, I'm reading, you know, in between the lines a little bit here, maybe to uh, tell um, a little more than what's revealed. But but I, I don't want to do damage to anything that is revealed by saying that I doubt the woman knew the significance of what she was doing as from Jesus' standpoint. Jesus indicated she's done a good thing. She has come and anointed my body for burial. I very much don't imagine her thinking that. Uh, maybe she did. I got to allow for that, I guess. I doubt very seriously she thinks, Jesus, I'm coming to do this because you're going to be dead soon and you'll be buried and it'd be nice to put oil on your body, your you know, your decomposed posing body. It'll smell better and all that kind of thing. <laughs> I doubt it. Maybe, but I doubt it. But look how he puts a wonderful spin on it. Jesus, make, we'd say making the best, not of a bad situation, but making the best of how others are badly treating her. 
And that brings me to the next point. He reams them out for their statement about what a waste. We could have sold that for a lot of money and given a lot of money to the poor. They didn't care about the poor. Um, Judas was big time involved in it, and I'm drawing a little bit from other gospel accounts and not just from Mark. Um, it was just a way of making it sound plausible or better or preferable or expedient in their mind if we say, uh, we could give it to the poor. You know what Judas is up to, don't you? He's, he's pilfering. He's stealing. He's, he's skimming off the top of the bag that he's carrying. And so he's just wanting all of that to be funneled through his bag and he's, he's taking from it and so forth. But they use this, uh, this, uh, uh, scheme or plan, you know, we could give a lot of money to the poor people rather than just pouring it out on your head, you know, that kind of thing. And one more thing, and then I'll, I'll, uh, close or maybe, maybe two things, but one for sure. He says, he, he knows, by the way, they're not plant, they're not wanting to do sincerely. We want to help some poor people. He, but he goes ahead and runs with what they've said by saying the poor you have with you all the time. Me, you don't have. Why don't we have you with us all the time? Well, it, of course, everybody passes eventually, but he talks about it right in front of them. Right in front of them talks about, she's anointing my body for burial. He's talking as if it's coming up real soon, is the way I'm, the, the, the way I'm putting it or saying it. And he indicates, you don't have me always. She's doing what she could while she has an opportunity. The poor, they're never going away. You got opportunity to help the poor, and, and it's God's will that you help the poor as often as you have occasion to do so. That's a wonderful God-approved thing. Uh, for you to do, but you don't have me always. Okay, and uh, she's done a good thing. I think I wanted to insert that too before I close. She's done a good thing. Leave her alone. <laughs> Leave her alone. Okay, that's it. We'll stop there. Thank you so much.